Hi, this is David Harper at Bionic Turtle with a review of Marginal Value at Risk or Marginal VAR. Typically a difficult topic for new lear risk learners. I'm using an example from Philip Jorian, Chapter 7, so that you can compare to that source. This is especially for my FRM Canada customers. This example is not for everybody. First, what is Marginal Value at Risk? Here, if we imagine a portfolio and we focus on the green line, that green line is a plot of portfolio value at risk. On the x-axis is our position in one of the portfolio's assets or components. So you can imagine here, as we move to the right, that would be like adding to a long position in an asset within the portfolio, and probably we'd be increasing the portfolio value at risk as we did so. But notice the green line is nonlinear, specifically it's convex or concave upward. If we pick a point on the green line, draw the tangent, the slope of the tangent line is the marginal VAR. That's the graphical interpretation. And we see yet again in risk measurement another application of the first derivative as a key sensitivity, a linear approximation. We lean on the first derivative a lot. And here it's telling us what's the change in portfolio VAR given a very small addition to the position. So that's the graphical Interpretation, let's look at the numbers. Again, following numbers exactly from Philip Jorian, third edition value at risk, chapter seven. So it's easier to compare. As usual, you can upload this spreadsheet at the member site. Two assets in the portfolio, foreign currencies, although that doesn't matter in particular. One for currency is Canadian dollars, the other is euros. We have a $200 position in Canadian dollars, a $100 position in euros. We have an assumption about the Canadian currency having a volatility or standard deviation of 5%. The euro has a volatility or standard deviation of 12%. The total size of the portfolio, it's only the two assets, is 300. That's 200 plus 100 is a $300 portfolio. Here's another assumption. We'll assume they are uncorrelated. This could be changed. And our final assumption is to select a confidence. Remember, we're doing a value at risk or VAR exercise here. So we always need to select the confidence. That's up to us. I could change it to 99%. I have it at 95%. That returns a familiar normal deviate to us, 1.645, meaning if we go 1.64 st standard deviations uh, to left or right of mean, we're going to be covering 95% of the area under the curve of a cumulative normal distribution. So now we can go to compute marginal VAR. First, let's notice we really need the variance covariance matrix in the case of the two assets it's just a two by two matrix and right here we've got the variance of the first asset and you'll notice that's just the volatility squared if I go up here to the Canadian dollar at five percent square it I get the variance of the Canadian dollar here's the variance of the euro and then here would be the covariance between the two and we said correlation is zero so covariance here is zero as well that's the covariance variance covariance matrix it's denoted by capital a Greek capital Sigma right here so you can see here it is copied and right here we have uh, something else that's a key building block and that is the portfolio variance in matrix notation and so notice what it is is it's the X which is the dollar exposures and it's a column vector right here and it's X transposed that's a row vector see how that's X the column vector of dollar exposures transposed here into a row vector and then the middle we have the variance covariance matrix so that the product of all three of them is right here X transposed covariance matrix and X the product of all those is the portfolio variance in dollar terms and so to see how that works here's the original three right here then first we post multiply the covariance matrix by the exposures see how that's Sigma X right here and I can do that right here if I take these out I'll just select that I'll say I'll do matrix multiplication and I just take the covariance matrix comma the dollar exposures the column vector and I hit shift control enter to do the matrix and so I've post multiplied to produce this now I need to pre multiply the transposed exposure in front to get this number right here and to do that I'll just 
start over. Again, I do a matrix multiplication, and now I really want this transposed exposure, a row vector, and multiplied by this column vector that we just produced. And I get this quantity right here, portfolio variance in dollar terms is 244. Now the next step is difficult, so don't expect to necessarily understand this immediately. This may require a little study. You can take a look at the spreadsheet. But we're going to calculate the beta for each of the assets in the portfolio. And that's the beta of the position with respect to the portfolio. So as you see in Jorian, here is the notation for that. Here it is the X's again and indicate dollar exposures. The W indicates weights. So if I go, if I take this formula right here and implement it, it will allow me to calculate the beta for, here's the beta for the Canadian dollar, here's the beta for the euro. And so to do that, here I just start in equals. I'm going to take this quantity right here. So that's the, co that's the product of that covariance matrix and the dollar exposure right here. I'm going to divide it by this quantity here, which again is that portfolio variance. I should say portfolio dollar variance. And I want to multiply it by W. Why are we doing that? Because we want to translate this, this beta here, which is expressed in dollar exposures, into a unitless beta. So I'm going to, I'm going to multiply that by the total portfolio of 300. And that gives me 0.61, which is the beta with respect to the portfolio of the Canadian dollars. And I do the same thing here for the euro. So these are the key values. And this, in my experience, having taught this for a while now, this is the hardest part to understand. So now let's move down to the marginal value at risk. Remember that we've computed the beta for each of the positions. So here, uh, lower on the spreadsheet, I've copied the, the same portfolio assumptions. Here's our portfolio dollar variance. The square root of that is the volatility. And the portfolio var, that's just the volatility multiplied by that normal deviate. And then we get to some, some of the position calculations. And here's the position, two, uh, Canadian dollar euro, the volatility of each, the co dollar covariance of each, 0.5 and 1.44, that's right here from this matrix notation. This right here is what I call the dollar covariance. So if we come back down here, individual var, I'll skip that now. And then we've got those betas that we already computed. And then what I've got in the spreadsheet, just in case you'd like to look at this in different ways, I've got three ways to calculate the marginal var. They're all the same. It's just a matter of what's being included in the calculation. This first run right here is this formula right here. These are all from Philip Jor in here. This delta var, in this context, this denotes marginal var. So here we've got marginal var. Here's that essential idea of it, that it's a first derivative. And then over here we've got, that's the normal deviate, alpha, times the covariance. Here are the covariance of the asset or position to the portfolio divided by portfolio volatility. That formula is implemented right here. You can see here's the covariance. That's D note 29 right here divided by portfolio volatility multiplied by the critical Z. That's the alpha or normal deviate. And then the most helpful one I think is right here in the middle. It's this formula right here. If I could turn your attention to this, it's the var of the portfolio divided by W, the size of the portfolio, multiplied by the beta. So you see how it really looks very complicated at first, but really all we've got here, and this is why marginal var is really very closely related to beta. Marginal var here is beta, the asset's beta with respect to the portfolio, just scaled by this fraction here, var divided by W. So you'll notice that's what I've got here. Here's the var of the portfolio, in this case happens to be 25.7 dollars divided by the W, the total portfolio, which is 300, simply multiplied by the beta. In this case, 0.615 for the Canadian dollar, 1.7 for the euro. This formula right here is all we really need to calculate the marginal var right here. So that's the 
basic approach. All the spreadsheet is up on the website. This is David Harper, the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.